Welcome to Pulp Mythos. I'm Brian here with Spencer, and we're discussing Big Sky, episode number 13. If you've not hit the sub button or the bell, please do so. We do these reviews every single week, and another crazy-ass episode, Spencer. Uh, <laughs> White Lion is the name oh, yeah. of this episode. We got two roars. Oh, what, what, what was that? <laughs> Dude, I was dying laughing, because... Like, like it happened and Megan was like Did she just scream at him <laughs> And I was like I think she was roaring Because she mentioned the white lion And then she was like oh It just sounded like she was yelling at her And well, I couldn't stop giggling Because it was it was funny as shit I mean we, we got the little story with her and Blake An episode or two back yeah, And yeah. then she did it in her room Which I was like okay you know fine But then no, then she did it again like for real <laughs> And I was like okay a little strange. Um, let's do, let's just. I'll oh, go ahead. I was just saying it's one of those things where it's it's over the top. It's kind of done, I think, goofily on purpose. But for all the people to have done it, she to me is one of the characters that in this second half of this season because it feels like a whole different season at this point. Uh, you know, Ronald is so great right now <laughs> yeah, but yes yeah, her to me uh cheyenne is one of the carrying that storyline anyway she's, she's more grounded that, to me yes compared to other characters she feels more like a real person and she seems to be written a little more real except for the little <laughs> that that's what i'm saying like it, everything everything was great and then it took me out of the scene and i started laughing because you know when she need John Wayne the nuts like everything she was saying to him like all right good like she's a badass she's just telling everybody basically to fuck off and then she does that and I'm like oh well that it took me out of the scene I was like oh well that's silly <laughs> so the whole so last week Blake got hit in the head with the shovel by JW <laughs> <laughs> and I f I didn't think he was dead I you know we talked about it in the review and but no nah, he's dead <laughs> And not only is he dead, then we had the odd thing of Cheyenne um, making it look like an accident. Now, that paid off later because she was explaining it. I guess it's something she's sort of holding over uh, John Wayne. But, yeah, yeah, I can't believe he's dead. I, I was legitimately surprised by that. Well, after, not after I found out he was dead, I wasn't sure whether or not he was going to make it or if he was going to pop up and... I can't believe you hit me or whatever. I that's what I was expecting to happen, but like you said, we found out he's actually dead, dead, and uh, that's that to me is even more comical because there's a scene later where <laughs> Jenny's like all heartbroken about it, and I'm like, oh my god, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Her husband just died, and now <laughs> heartbroken about some high school sweetheart that died. Like man, she, she's bad luck. But honestly, yeah. <laughs> but all you could think of was uh, William H Macy and the shoveler from uh, Mystery Men. <laughs> <laughs> it was superhero day the other day, so there you go. Yeah. Um, the ending of this episode, we'll go ahead and go into that, and then we'll go into all. Uh, yeah, we'll touch on that now. Um. I mean, so I think her name was Angela. I could be wrong. The she, the clerk from the sheriff's office, she comes to see Jenny at that crappy little motel, and and she's like, "All right, I'm going to tell you what's going on in this town." Because we kept saying over and over, "What is it that's so scary about this family? What is it that they have over everyone's head? Why is everyone working with them?" It, it, up to this point, it hasn't made sense, and this is the first episode where the they're telling us no there is something like they're like no there there's a thing and it, it doesn't i don't think it has to do with cole's death or, or anything like that i think there's something else going on and i know we had or you had alluded to the idea that maybe they're tied into the um uh kidnapping you know young women and trafficking them or you know maybe there's some angle there that'll tie into the over you know the bigger story and so she's sitting there, and I, my assumption was the ending would be she'd tell us what what it is. We'd get the big reveal, and it'd be like, oh, wow, that's a big deal, and then, you know, cut the credits. 
Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this big ass truck. Well, I'm sh- I'm assuming Rand was driving. I'm just guessing. Slams through the motel. It was well shot. I, I I enjoyed that aspect of it. Smashes through it, trying to kill Ginny and I, I, like I said, I don't know if her name was Angelo, something like that. I didn't write it down. Um, now the obviously is one or both of them dead. I, I'm assuming Ginny's alive. I don't know about the other girl, but yeah, another crazy ass ending for an episode of Big Sky. Well, you know, Jenny might have died, and then we're going to get flashbacks for the ne- next seven episodes of Cassie and her's relationship. <laughs> like, I don't know. So that way she can still get paid, just like uh, Ryan Felipe got paid for <laughs> yeah. seven episodes. But it, I wasn't sure, because at first I thought it was Ronald that drove through it, because right before that scene, they should have been even better. <laughs> With his new truck, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I was like, damn, is that is that Ronald? Because they kept showing him, and then he had the doll up front. He was talking to his mom, and then he was singing, and then right after that, that happened. So it's one of those things where they've done such a good job. Well, for all the things that they've done, hopefully and bad, one of the things they've done well is. They do keep you guessing. You're not really quite sure what's going on. And this, there's there's like three or four people. I mean, there's not a plethora of people, but there's three or four people that it could have been. And I like that. This is as poorly as the dialogue is written and stuff. It's almost like if uh, (laughs) George Lucas wrote the dialogue for this and then... Uh, did all the over the top things because I just read an article recently. I knew that George Lucas was not a fan of dialogue, but he said that the the silent film era was the pinnacle of film. He said, because, <laughs> "Yeah, but, well, I he believe did, he would he would say that." Yeah, as a, as said, the one guy who doesn't know how to write dialogue. Yes, because <laughs> what he said was is that film is supposed to be about music creating a mood, and then the visual interpretation of art or whatever. I don't know. He's not completely wrong, but that's a whole other discussion yeah. for another yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but that's what this feels like to me, because every time something happens, it is crazy. It's eye catching. And you're just like, Oh my God, the music's not bad, but the dialogue is dog shit. <laughs> Uh, okay, now this next thing, and I, I was going to bring it up before we started recording, but I saved it because I, I want to know what you have to say. Okay, they, they take Cole Danvers, who's the guy that Rand killed years ago, and that Blake was going to expose. They're gonna, they take his bones, right? And they're going to dispose of them. Was that toxic waste? <laughs> I was like, what the hell? This filled of barrels filled with green stuff, and they're like, just put it in there and it'll melt. I was like, what, what is, I thought I was in a late 80s, early 90s movie. I was like, what the hell is this? Fucking Captain Planet was going to come out. Uh, yeah, exactly, a RoboCop or, or somebody. I, I'm, and I'm being serious. Did it, because I didn't re- have time to rewind it. I was, I was, I had limited time when I was watching it. and That's what it looked like. I was like, what is that? <laughs> well, here's, here's what's the best part about that. <laughs> okay. So remember I said, what if it's, you know, the human trafficking plot? What if it's even better? The, the government gave them hundreds of millions of dollars to bury their toxic waste on their land. <laughs> you might be right. I honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's well, how they all this money and they got government backing. So everybody's afraid of them because they want the government to come in and like take them out. Like it's. <laughs> I, well, I'm sitting there and I'm like, wait a minute. They're not. What, what is that shit? And, and what's even more bizarre is. They're just standing over these that open, like, if, 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 I don't care what it is, if there's a substance that I can drop something in and, you know, it'll dissolve it or destroy it, I'm probably going to wear some kind of protective gear or I'm going to be a little concerned about, you know, it splashing on me or they're just like, no, they just open it. They're like, no, just put that, put it in there. And then he's even got like one of the bones in his hand, (laughs) like, and then he's just like putting his hand in there. Yeah. Like you said. If it is, even if it's not toxic waste, like even if it's some kind of vat of acid or whatever, it's it's enough to dissolve bones. So why wouldn't you have some kind of like rubber glove, like something? 
instead of just like, nah, just throw that bone in there. Come on, Rand. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, I was just like, okay, that was Which one of those even, weird scenes. So. <laughs> Which was even better. He wanted to keep, like, whatever that was, a finger bone or a rib. Like, he was just like, I want to keep it. <laughs> and he was, like, smelling it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rand. But... Did you see the when they were the part where after she need JW and the, you know, it's like, you know, kill me. Like Rand was getting excited. <laughs> you see the camera like cuts to him and he has like a little smirk on his face. And I'm like, okay, I guess, I guess he's into this. I uh, was going to, you know, watch his sister get strangled to death. That's, that's something that Rand's into. I mean, I've seen videos like that, but, <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, they've alluded to how much of a weird duty is. And like I said, a couple scenes before that, he's like sniffing bones and stuff. And now he's waiting for one sibling to kill the other while he's just sitting there watching, not trying to break it up or talk them down or deescalate the situation. He's just making it worse. <laughs> Let's get to my favorite stuff in the entire episode. And that would be <laughs> Ronald. Oh, boy, yeah. oh boy, man. I, I legit, okay. I, you know, the actor is having a blast. There's no question in this episode. I mean, every scene you could tell he's just, he's like, this is what it is. And I'm going for it. And, and like, there were legit scenes I, I was enjoying, like, actually, like, so there's a lot to unpack here. We have Scarlett, who's his girlfriend and her sister, Mary, you know, Mary comes over and is like, Hey, something's off with this guy. And when he comes in and she wants to take a picture, you know, she wants to use a picture, I guess, to search on the internet. And he's like, all right, well, let's do a selfie. And they, do, they line up and he wants her in the middle. And he's like, you know, my mom always said, whoever's in the middle dies first. <laughs> and it was the greatest like threat. It, I mean, it, I loved it. it. I was laughing my ass off. It, I mean, it was like, damn Ronald. And like he, he's the, <laughs> the way he delivered that line, the way she looked at him, afterwards well yeah because she he assumed that she knows who he is or at least thinks she knows who he is so what he's accused of is kidnapping women and trying to kill them so for and kids so the sister is super freaked out by this and then for him to basically be like you're going to die first and threaten her. She's fucking terrified now. And the way he pulled that off and the way he delivered it, not just the actor, it's that character. It it was so creepy, but funny at the same time. It was very entertaining to say the least. So he ends up, you know, finding out that, you know, she's trying to contact her sister who conveniently didn't have her phone. And, <laughs> Are, are we? Yeah, I guess it is. Or I, I was confused. There was a lot of confusing things. I guess he was hiding it or whatever. I don't know. But basically, he comes to the conclusion: okay, Mary knows, so I've you know got to go kill her. So he goes to her house, and we discover that she has a a weird ass doll collection. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. just a, a shit ton of these dolls, these creepy little dolls. Um, he finds out that she in fact has contacted, uh, you know, Cassie and Jenny's crew and now Cassie and Mark are on their way to the house. So he proceeds to brutally murder her with a razor blade. Well done horror scene, you know, murder scene. Um, he's constantly talking to his mom. Now, now he's got a doll that I guess is sort of an avatar for his mom. <laughs> it, it's all well done in, in terms of horror. Um, but then we get the worst most frustrating scene in the entire show. Okay. I'm going to complain a lot right here. So, you know, <laughs> stay with me and then I'll get your input. Mark, Cassie show up. They knock on the door. Ronald is there. He has the dead body wrapped up right, right near him. You know, he, how do I escape? How do I escape? We cut, we come back. They, they see blood on the floor. They kick in the door. Ronald is gone. We see later he's in a vehicle with the dead body, with the doll. He's good. My problem is you cannot set up a conflict and not tell us how he got out of it. It was—I mean, I was sitting there like, did I miss a scene? You—you—you you, you set up 
you put a character in, you know, like, oh no, how's he going to get out of this? You can't just not show us. <laughs> like, there's a lot of things I forgive with this show, and I'm like, you know what, whatever, not a big deal. Um, it is what it is. But this was one of those, like, that was the laziest shit ever. Because, okay, you, you set up a conflict, and you in no way, shape, or form explain to us how he got out of it. Well, no, because the, what, season, last season, when he stole the car and kidnapped the kid, like, there was at least a distraction. There was something that happened that distracted you away from, you know, where he was or what was going on. And then that's how he was able to get out. But like you said, we have no fucking clue. They kicked the door in. We don't know if, I mean, there was a basement. So what, did he climb out one of the windows down there? Are we supposed to just draw our own conclusions? Are they going to explain it later? They didn't give any hints. Oh, they they're never, they're the never going yeah. to explain this. <laughs> because there was only two of them. So for him to get away without ever having to fight any of them really wouldn't be that hard. But why didn't they just add like a 30 second scene of him climbing out a basement window or something like it would have been super easy to do but well, like you, I, i'm factoring in the, the the body he's in a car um the whole thing the whole situation if you're gonna write a conflict and you're gonna set up like oh no how how is our character protagonist antagonist whatever gonna get out of this one you can't set up something and then never tell us how it you know like like didn't even attempt to explain, like you said, uh, there's been several situations where Ronald was sort of like, "Oh no, what's he going to do?" But they sh- sort of showed us how he got out of it, even if it was bullshit. They gave us somewhat of an answer. This one, it, it was the laziest writing. You know, they were like, "We don't, need, we don't know." <laughs> well, remember, they wrote like seven episodes in a month, so and they're, <laughs> <laughs> it may have, they may have showed it. It may have just got cut for time because they're like, fuck, we can't do that because that adds a plot hole back on episode nine. <laughs> like, I don't, I can't think of a reason for them not to show it, but other than piss poor planning and piss poor writing. But that's one of the things, too. I'm super entertained. As much as I'm, we bitch about stuff and make fun of stuff, it's still fun. Like, yes, it's bad. And, you know, I have equated it to a lot of different awful movies and stuff, but it's entertaining. It's fun to watch. It is really bad. It's piss poor done. The dialogue's awful, but it, it feels like a college project that a bunch of friends got together and did. <laughs> and it's super fun because well, like, it's bad. <laughs> but like Mark, like when Mark got Cassie out of jail, you know, and, it, you know, he got the governor to call. It was stupid. But it was an explanation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the show does this a lot. They'll set up sort of a conflict. And you're like, ooh, how are they going to get out of this? And even if it's a dumb thing, at least they sort of tell us. This was an example. Like you said, it, it's, this felt rushed. Like, they were like, all right, we want to set up the conflict. We, we, you know, we need that cut to commercial where, oh, no, what's Ronald going to do? But we have no clue how to <laughs> realistically how he could escape this. So we're not even going to attempt to answer it. He just will. And that's sort sort of how that played. It was the one in in an episode full of insanity. This was the one scene that just really bugged the hell out of me. Well, they probably filmed it. <laughs> they had a house that they they had like stock footage of, and they were like, you know what, this would be a really good house for this scene. And then once they figured out he had to escape, they're like, well, fuck. There's no side door. There's no basement windows. How are we gonna have him escape? Well. Let's just have them escape and not explain anything. <laughs> so, so we have that. So yeah, that was my, my gripe of the episode. Then we have an interesting turn and this plays into something I had said, you know, I've been saying about, I think Ronald and uh, Scarlet are going to be sort of a Joker, Harley Quinn thing. Well, turns out and tell me if you agree yet again, we didn't talk about this before recording. She established, she explains that, her past boyfriend or fiance or whatever he was, a guy named Steve. And <laughs> you don't have to worry about Steve. St- Steve's never coming back. Now, now Scarlett tells him this. Mary brings up the fact, how oh, you know how things went with Steve. Or I, I don't even, yeah, she did say Steve. Yeah. 
Well, then we get to the scene where Mark and Cassie are at the house. They get in the basement. They see a freezer. They bust into it, and oh, there's a dead body in there, and it's been there a long, long time. My assumption, that's Steve. So Scarlet and Mary killed Steve, or Scarlet killed Steve, or Mary, a combination of the two, or one of them killed Steve. Sc Scarlet might be as insane <laughs> as Ronald, and and this may help him out because I'm thinking, well, okay, sh Mary called them and like, hey, I know where Ronald is. Well, now that they found a dead body, they may be like, well, this maybe she's just you know she's got all these weird dolls, she kills people. And maybe she was attracted to the idea of Ronald and she, you know, wanted us to come. In other words, this may be a way he can get away with them not finding him. I don't know. We'll we'll see. There's two or three more episodes left. But what you think about that? Did you come to the same conclusion or it'd be a good distraction. Uh you think of, you know, now you have all these people involved in that because although they you know, there's a big manhunt essentially for Ronald right now, you get locals and local authorities involved in this body, this murder <coughs> and they would take over jurisdiction. So now you have these local cops looking after this murder and it would basically push Ronald's case out of the way for the time being, which could buy him more time to get away. So I think that it's, we talk about how awful the dialogue is and how many you know, plot holes there already are, but then they do stuff like that where it sets up the possibility of something great. And I'm like, well, maybe parts of this was planned well. So it's, it, like I said, it's almost like they have this one main storyline that these college kids came up with, but they were told that they got to fill it <laughs> full of extra episodes. So like, fuck. Now we got to add all these subplots that are basically just falling through the waysides. And that, because to me, that's the only thing that could explain it. <laughs> There's like one solid main plot and then a bunch of shitty little subplots that aren't all that great. Yeah. Cause, but not good. <laughs> yeah. Cause like there are certain, like I, I enjoy Ronald's story and I mean, I, I'm assuming it might resolve this season. I could be wrong. Um, but characters like Rand, I can give a shit less about Rand. Um, Cheyenne's become more interesting, and I and I um, wouldn't hate it if she stuck around for, let's say, a season two or whatever they're going to do. Um, I'm assuming Mark's here for the long haul. Let's go into that. We get we get a scene where it was actually a well done scene um, where they're uh, like him and Cassie are driving. Yeah, it was a, it was a good scene, and they're basically talking, you know, about their personal lives and loss. And she explains about her husband that she lost. And, and then, um, he talks about his sister and how he had sent her into a store and she never came back and he knows who took her, but they've never found a body. And which made me think, Oh, is this going to be another plot line that ties into something? Is this why he's there? Is, is this tie into the trafficking angle? Maybe that's uh, what I yeah, so I'm thinking, oh, like you said, I was like, oh, shit, maybe there is somewhat of a bigger story arc that, and there is a plan here. So I, I thought that was a really decent scene. That, and you know, I've liked, the first episode I saw Mark, I was like, this, he's weird. I like the Twin Peaks-ish David Lynch vibe that he has, but I was like, I don't understand why he's here. And then this, this show has done this the whole time they'll introduce something and I'm like, that's fucking stupid. And then you give them a couple episodes and you're like, okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And that's how I felt with Mark is that initially I was like, ah, I'm not digging him. But as the episodes have gone by, you know, Cassie and Jenny, their like dynamic is not great when they're in scenes together. It's gotten better, but it's not great. But Cassie and Mark from the jump, it's like a chemistry and it does so well, the scenes that they're in together. And when he started bringing up his sister, my first thought immediately was, is the reason he's on this is because it was tied to human trafficking. And that's why he has an interest in this case is because that's what his sister, uh, that's the lead that they have for his sister. So now he's trying to work this case to find out, who the big top dog is so that he can maybe find his sister. 
you think there's a, a romance set up for him and Cassie or I, I haven't re- compl- I haven't gotten that vibe yet, but they are spit. No. They, they seem to spend a lot of time together. Not saying that they will go down that path, but these kinds of shows typically like to have some kind of will they, won't they dynamic. I, I wouldn't be mad about it. I think that they, their chemistry together and not just like sexual or romantic, they, they play better off each other than almost all the other characters in the show. Like their their banter together, their vibe together, even their dialogue, which is still shittily written, still sounds good when those two are saying it to each other. So, you know, chemistry plays a big role in movies and shows whether or not it's believable or whether or not it keeps you in a scene. And I think that those two together uh, could lead the show. And I think that when we talk about maybe Jenny died, uh, the way they're setting up Mark and Cassie, I think that they may, Jenny may not make it through the end of this season. And then it may just be the, uh, you know, the will they, won't they kind of thing, but it's those two working together and they'll end up being a sexual tension down the road. Like, I don't know, but it feels like those two are going to end up being the leads and Jenny might be a sub character or a dead character. We have not much to say about them. Horst and Margaret, this episode dealing with Blake's death. Uh, they both believe that, well, Horst says he thinks, you know, that he took his own life. Margaret, you know, feels this bullshit, which she's right. Um, they were there. They had a few okay scenes, nothing, nothing that important. I, I'm assuming as soon as we find out the big reveal, what it, what exactly Horst is up to and why everybody's afraid of him. Um, that'll be more, you know, he'll be more interesting, but in terms of this episode, I was like, yeah, I didn't care. I love, I, I have this love hate relationship with Horst. Like, it makes me laugh so hard because there's this gentleman who it just by how he's walking and talking and everything. I'm assuming it's a stroke. Like he's had a stroke. I think uh, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, he's, he's partially paralyzed. He doesn't have a lot of movement. He slurs a lot of the words he's saying, but for him to still draw fear from everybody in his family from a guy who can't sit up by himself, the guy who can, you know, not walk by himself yet. Everybody is still terrified of him. I can tell you right now that if somebody who whooped my ass my whole life, if somebody who was putting their hands on me and then all of a sudden now I had the upper hand, I can tell you right now that he would have caught the ass whooping of a lifetime. (laughs) You know, like the, the mom, like for her to not, finally defend herself she tried for a second but then that's that's the part that made it unbelievable for me you know she finally was able to stand up for herself she finally got the courage to fight back and he was able to fight her off with one kind of half used arm I was like, that's bullshit. Well, their the, their whole dynamic has been not that great in terms of the writing, and and I'm still not, I'm still not sure what her character is. <laughs> like, like they 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 focus on you know, okay, she does a lot of, um, she pops a lot of pills, she drinks a lot, so you know, there's part of it. Clearly, she's. Like like I said before, we we're not sure on their dynamic of their relationship, how long they've been together. We know they have a bunch of kids. Um, I don't. The show hasn't done a good enough job of explaining to me what this family is, what they do, why they're afraid we've of already, Horst. We've already established it. They made a deal with the government <laughs> for toxic very waste. Toxic waste. <laughs> you might be right. Like that. And- like, the field of weird, like toxic canisters. What the hell is that? What was his name? Cody. The uh, the, the dude. No, that's Cody. Was the husband from Cole? Cole. That's what I was thinking. So maybe Cole was like the toxic Avenger, and they had to kill him 
because the government was like, we can't let people know that this toxic waste, you know, uh, <laughs> turns people into these giant monsters. Yeah, I don't know what, I don't know. I, I hope we find out next week, because now they've teased that there is, in fact, a secret and and what it what is the secret what it, what's it going to be because if it, if it is human if it is the trafficking i mean that is fucked up that this whole, whole town has been complicit in this shit like that's some wild shit if that's what it is but i don't I, hell i don't know at this point um i'm curious if the writers know i'm assuming they finished <laughs> shooting these three episodes <laughs> the writers like we're not really sure we're winging it week to we're week still, still working on it um <laughs> better it explains <laughs> so much <laughs> ronald uh was getting a new truck um let's uh, okay i'm curious if he's gonna pack up and head out um the way the episode ended if you really really wanted to you you could write ronald you know he can go get his his girlfriend and her daughter and they could just leave i mean <laughs> they could do that if they wanted i don't I don't know that they will, but it still blows my mind that he's that close. That he's like, no, I'm not going to go that far. I'm just going <laughs> to go to the town, next town over. That's where I'll hide. Yeah, he's... <laughs> you just look at principalities. So if you think of something like Nashville, there's all these sub-cities around it. So it'd be like if he went from Nashville to Franklin, which is like 20 minutes away. <laughs> or... Look at, you know, outside Chicago, there's Aurora, Illinois, or Gary, Indiana, all of those little sub cities that are within, you know, 30, 40 minutes. It's essentially that they were in this larger city and then he just went to, well, there's this little city right outside of it. Nobody knows me there. Yeah, it's insane. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, there was a few little other things, but I don't think they're worth <laughs> taking too much time. Um, you know, the Cheyenne told Jenny about Cole Danvers, but I mean, whatever. It's Carol. Uh, hmm? It's Carol's brother. Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> So Brie Larson's gonna she gonna pop in. Go. <laughs> it's an ABC show. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, that was about it. Anything? Uh, I think there's 16, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we get three more. Three more. Um. Yeah. Any yeah. other? thoughts there was one thing that i was gonna say while you were talking about something else that was making me laugh but i can't remember what it was now uh i think when you look at the body that's in the basement uh if that's not mary which i don't think it was and i'm pretty sure it's steve yeah so but now you have Scarlet, her kid, and Ronald, or Arthur, or whatever he's going by right now. Uh, I think that she would be willing to go on the run with him, because now they found the body. Uh, unless she had no idea that it happened, which, the way her character's played out, does not lead me to believe that No, because her, her line was, He'll, we'll never have to worry about him. <laughs> Like, she tells Ronald, like, yeah, don't worry about Steve. You'll never see Steve again. And it's like, okay, I guess you killed him. Because you're right. At this point, if, if Ronald's like, yeah, I killed some people, she'd be like, oh, well, I did too. So. <laughs> Me too. Who gives a Please. shit? <laughs> she might be like, cool. How'd you do it? <laughs> um, he put his well, mom in a in a freezer or in a <laughs> fridge. Yep. Well, and it, whose kid is that? So... Scarlet has a kid. Is that Steve's kid? Yeah, she said it was his father. Uh, Steve's father. Or, shit. The V. I think it's Phoebe is the daughter. She was like, "Yeah, that's Steve was the dad." Okay, I didn't catch that part. It was they were in the car when she was when he was driving her and um, Phoebe. 
I was too focused on uh, him stealing her phone and sing the. I oh, remember what song he was singing to her, but it was the same song he was singing while he was cleaning up the itsy bitsy spider or whatever the fuck he was saying. That, that was another oh, little. Oh. <laughs> and and yet again, and there's another scene that's that's ridiculous and doesn't work logically, but I I forgave it because it tried. And the scene being the cleanup. There's no way in hell you're cleaning um, blood out of all those materials, the doll, like, you know what I mean? Like, you show the murder scene sort of, you know, the blood spraying everywhere, and he was able to get it all cleaned up. It's like, get the fuck out of here. Um, this I mean, is the reason I didn't have as big a problem. I didn't mind because they, they explained that he was, you know, they were just like, well, he, he worked hard and he cleaned it. <laughs> I was like, all right. But to me it shows that you know the first the first sequence we have of seeing that he killed somebody was with his mom but i'm starting to think that you know a lot of the stuff earlier in this season his mom believed that he was a like a monster he believed she believed that he was not a good person and i think that she may have helped him cover up a previous murder uh you know and you know her instilling the cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up. I don't know necessarily that it had to do with her being, you know, OCD or being a shithead. I think that he probably had killed something as a kid, whether it's an animal or, or, you know, another kid or something. And I think that kind of like Dexter, where he's killed in the past, I think that him cleaning up, he knows how to because he's done it several times now. That'd be a cool angle. If they're going to keep the character around and keep messing with him, that, yeah, that'd be a cool angle for, for the character. So if any writers are listening, that right, big sky, there you go. Use that. Um, well, if you haven't already, I've already tried to help him like two or three times. I know <laughs> they're not listening to us, but like the, I, the whole thing with this GI Joe's watching, I guess, watching him sin. Hell yeah. I'm going to be locked away. I was like, <laughs> I thought that but, was a great line. But that that's what I'm saying is a lot of these lines they could be like I said, if they show that he killed in the past or there's a lot of things that would help it make sense. But it, it seems like his mom was even more twisted yeah. than we thought. Like I like initially it was like, yeah, she's a little off, but you know, nothing crazy. And, and the more we learn about his childhood, the more questionable <laughs> thing things have become well and we we talked about it before the church that they made this big deal out of that now we haven't referenced in for one episode yeah yeah so you have that we don't know enough about his backstory so although these couple last episodes feel like they're thrown together um they have referenced some things that may play a role in the future and I hope that by the end of this, that they take heed in that and actually explain what happened with Ronald if they keep him around. And even if they, even if they don't keep him around, I still want to know what the fuck was up with the church. So, I mean, I hope it's not going to set up like Lost where they elude, you know, they leave you all these breadcrumbs and then, oh, uh, well, 85% of those breadcrumbs were just dead ends we we're not going to explain any of those I, I, explain this one thing <laughs> pretty sure that's the case though i think i know they probably, comes <laughs> me out. they probably you know drop storylines where yeah they they were like well you know we're i'm i haven't taken the time to look but i would assume it's a large team of writers and they um i it's probably not even been the same group the, the entire run of the show this is me assuming i don't know this and, and uh, like you said, they had a short amount of time to get these scripts done, and they probably, you know, had a legit deadline. Like, look, you have this many days. What, get it done? And you know, they were scrambling. So yeah, if you guys are listening, uh, which you know, if you, I suggest you do because we got some pretty damn good ideas. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not scripting it out for you currently, but I could if you. If you <laughs> It wouldn't be any worse. <laughs> that, that's true. <laughs> um, but yeah. All right. Um, 
Anything else? No, I think that's it. <laughs> These are always fun to do. Um, so yeah, I appreciate everyone listening. Uh, what else we got going this week? We have look out for the Invincible season finale review going up later this weekend. We have um, City on a Hill, another mayor of East Town coming up on Monday night. And am I missing anything? Big Sky. I think that's all we're doing right now. So yeah, check out all our content, and we'll see y'all next time. Right, City on a Hill. That's still yeah, going. yeah. But uh, yeah, see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.